All right, in this video, we're gonna be going over the Mighty X Lookup. So this is one of the most popular, probably the most popular function in spreadsheets that gets the most press. If this is the new VLOOKUP. So there were some problems with VLOOKUP and they invented XLOOKUP to make it easier for us all to look things up. Uh, and so I'll show you how to use this function here. Um, there's also another way to look things up called index match, but now that XLOOKUP is created, I don't see a great reason for index match other than very specific use cases. So for the most, so most of your lookup things, you're gonna be doing XLOOKUP and it's really easy. So let's say here we've got apple is a dollar, banana is 50 cents, cherry 75 cents, and we want to look up you know, whatever is in up here, we've got this drop down to where you can select apple, banana, cherry. So you can select these and we want in this cell to show the price of whatever is selected. So that's a lookup. And what basically a lookup means is, you know, we're gonna be looking up from this list and looking up an, a part of this data and returning it. And so how XLOOKUP works. Let's look at the documentation. There's a search key, a lookup range, and a result range. And then there's some other optional things in these square brackets um, that we'll talk about in a bit. But just the basic use of XLOOKUP, the first argument that you need to pass is a search key. And so the search key is basically whatever you're using to look up in the list with. This is the key. So in this case, this would be cherry, since we're looking up cherry in this list. So for this, let's click cherry here. So for the next argument, we wanna pass the lookup range. And so this is whatever the search key is, is whatever we're looking up in the lookup range. So the search key and the lookup range are basically like the same kind of data. So we would select this range here. And then the result range is whatever we want to show from the lookup range. So here we wanna show the prices. So we would highlight those and close parenthesis. And if we hit enter, it shows 75 cents. It's finding cherry and it's looking up the price. So we can change this to banana, change it to 50, apple, change it to a dollar, boom. So that's the very basics about how to use XLOOKUP. So let's move on to a little bit more of an advanced example, utilizing the if not found argument. So here, let's say we have a list of animals and the noise that they make, and we want to, we want to look up basically like the sound of the animal based on whatever is in this cell. So to do that, we can use XLOOKUP like we used before. Search key is dog. Lookup range is this range that has dog, cat, bird in it. The result range is gonna be the noises that they make. So let's do that. And so this works just like the previous example where we type in something here, it looks it up in this and returns whatever we have here. So bird, but let's say we type in horse here, which is not in this list. It gives us this ugly error here. And so what you can do in XLOOKUP is pass a fourth parameter or argument to this, which is optional because it's in square brackets. Um, this is called the missing value argument. So if there's a missing value, we can show basically a placeholder instead of the ugly NA message. So um, maybe we could type not found here. And so whenever we type in horse, it's not found in the list. It shows not found instead of that ugly hashtag NA. So dog, cat, meow, pig, not found. But let's say we add pig to this, oink. And then what we have to do is 
no, now we have to expand our range to go down one more cell so that we're over these the whole range now and no type oink but horse is still not there so horse would be not found so that's how you use the optional if not found argument in the function which is the fourth thing you pass to it all right so the next cool way we can use x lookup is to look up ranges instead of just exact values which is the fifth argument you could pass to it so let's say we have this scenario where we want to be able to type in a score here and based on that score pull in the grade so you know if we didn't have this functionality we would have to have this list be 199 98 97 96 95 94 all the way down 0 to 100 with the corresponding grade that that was in order to look that up in a list and see what the grade is. But this functionality allows us to not have to do that, which I'll show you how that works. So XLOOKUP, just like we normally do, search key is this. That's what we're searching for. The lookup range is gonna be our scores here. The result range, what we wanna show is what grade that equals. You know, let's uh, put a missing value in here, not found. And then this fifth parameter is what I'm talking about, this match mode. So let's read what it says here. Match mode is an optional parameter. Um, if you put in zero in here, it'll be an exact match, which is everything that we've done before. So if you don't put anything in this uh, argument here, um, it's, if you don't pass any argument to it, it's going to default as zero. So like usually how index match is like an exact match, which is how we've been doing it so far, where it looks up something and if it matches exactly that, it pulls in whatever you want to show. But what this match mode allows you to do is to search for like greater than or equal to uh, in your search, which is useful for doing things like this where we pull in the grade. So it says how to find a match for the search key. Zero is for an exact match. One is for an exact match or the next value that is bigger than the search key. Negative one for an exact match or the next value that is lower than the search key. Uh, and then you can use two for a wildcard match. But in this, if you're putting in uh, a match mode, you'll usually be doing zero, one, or negative one. So here we're gonna put a negative one and I'll show you how that works. So we put negative one in there and it's giving us an A. We've got 95 here. 90, it still works. 85, B. 70, C. 75, uh, you know, 65, D. 50, F. 10, F. 99, A. So how this works is, see it says negative one for an exact match. So if it equals 90, 80, or anything exactly like that, it will match that. And then it says, or the next value that is lower than the search key. And so that's going to pull in anything that is that value or greater. So for example, uh, when you type 95 in there, it's gonna look for nine, it's gonna look for 95 or the next value that is lower than the search key, which is 90. It's gonna 95, 94, 93, is there anything else there? What's the next one? It's 90 and it's gonna pull that in and then it's gonna go uh, use 90 as the lookup and it's gonna look up the score or the grade that 90 reflects. And then it works that way for all of them. So for, if you type 85 in, it's going to you know look for 85 in this, as an exact match or it's gonna find the next one that is lower than that. So basically what you have to do here is treat these all as kind of like greater than or equal to when you're using negative one. And if you wanted to do it uh, the other way with one, what you could actually do is make this 100, this 90, 80, 70, 60. Change this to a one. Whoops, not 11. So 99 would be an A. 
Actually, we might have to make this 89, but let's see what it, what it says for 90 when we plug that in. So 90, it says it's a B. So you actually would have to put 89 here, 79, 69, 59. This is gonna look for this greater than or lower. So, um, so yeah, so 89, B. So there's two ways you can do it using one or negative one. Negative one searches for greater than or equal to, and one searches for less than or equal to. So any grade less than or equal to 100, but not less than or equal to 89 will pull in the A, you know, and so on and so forth down the list. So you can use it whichever way that you like. So zero, one, and negative one. Zero is exact match, one is less than or equal to, and negative one is greater than or equal to. Not a lot of people know how to use it this way, so you knowing how to use this is gonna be really awesome for uh, a lot of things that you do in spreadsheets, and I think you'll impress some people. All right, let's take a look at the third optional argument in XLOOKUP. So this is another more advanced way to use XLOOKUP. So let's say we've got here a list of salespeople, the date that they sold something on, and the total sales for that day. So here we only have two people, Alex and Bob, uh, and the sales that happened for them on these days. And so let's say we want to look up maybe the first sale for Alex or Bob in this list, or the last sale. So here, um, you know, if we just do an exact match on Alex, it's going to, uh, you know, there's more than one Alex in this list. So which one of these does it look up? Does it look up this one and find it? Does it look up this one and find it? And so let's play around with this and, and see what we can do to customize XLOOKUP to make it do exactly what we want it to. So search key is Alex. Look up range, it's this range. Result range is these sales. We wanna pull in this person's sales. Oops, I still have sound here from the previous video, but I'll change that in, <laughs> in a sec. Um, so if there's a missing value, not found. We wanna do an exact match here because we're looking at Alex exactly in this list. So we're gonna put zero. And so here, search mode, we can do a one or a negative one is what you're mostly gonna be using here. You, um, so if you type in one here, it's going to search from the first entry to the last one. And so let's see how that works. It's gonna, pulls in 500 for Alex. So it, it goes down this list of Alex and whenever it hits the first Alex, it's gonna pull in the uh, first sales in this list. So we can see Alex says 500, but if we type Bob in here, it says 600, because this is the first Bob, 600. So if we flip this to negative one, Bob says 650, because it's basically gonna go in the opposite direction. It's gonna go bottom up, the, you know, the last Bob in this list says 650. And if we type Alex here, it says 520 because the last Alex in this list says 520. So that's how you can customize the way that you look things up um, with the third optional argument, the search mode in XLOOKUP. So that's XLOOKUP. And I just wanna talk about a few more things before we go, some little nuances of XLOOKUP. So sticking with the same example as before, but I just simplified it a little bit. I added a few more salespeople and the number of sales, and we're doing a lookup based on salesperson for the see what the number of sales they got. So one nuance of X lookup is these, um, the lookup range and the result range have to be the same length. So here, let's bump these down to 12. And so, you know, we're looking up the salesperson and whatever the sales are. But if I, let's say I make this list actually here, where I'm going one more down, where 
these don't match up, it's gonna give me an error. See, it says NA. So that's one common thing. If you're getting an error with your X lookup, first go see that the ranges are the exact same length because that's how the function works is it goes through these two lists and matches them up together. And if those lists aren't the same length, it's going to error out and just and not know what to do. So make sure the lists are the same length. So I'm gonna bump this back to 12. Another cool thing XLOOKUP can do is horizontal matching. So I'm gonna copy and paste, just transpose this list. It looks kind of crazy, but give me a sec. So let's say the list was this way where it was horizontal. So in the old world, we'd have to use H lookup for this. You'd use V lookup or H lookup if you wanted to go horizontal, but X lookup, you can just do it both ways. So we can do X lookup, Alex, search key, lookup range, result range. and look things up horizontally that way. Bob, 600, Jake, 100. And just going back to the way it was before, uh, another problem with VLOOKUP used to be that whatever you looked up had to be to the right of whatever you were searching for. So you would have to type in like VLOOKUP, you know, search key, Alex, range, you would put the whole range in here and then the index, you would put like the column that it is. So like two, so you'd find five here. Bob, 600, that's, that's VLOOKUP. But the problem is this cell would always have to be to the right of it. So if it was like this and we referenced, uh, you know, this range and we wanted to do one here to look up that, it just like doesn't work because how VLOOKUP does is it goes to the left is the lookup thing and then whatever is to the right is things that you can pull in. And so this has a lot of problems where like you also have to figure out like how many columns over something is from your lookup and it just makes your looking up kind of a pain. But with XLOOKUP, you know, you're, you're passing the lookup range and the result range. So you don't need to look up like something X columns over. You just, you know, pass those both in and it can look it up for you just fine. So here we've got, you know, sales to the right or sorry, to the left of salesperson. And this still, you know, works totally fine. So those are some of the reasons we use XLOOKUP now instead of VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. So usually people who are advanced in Excel would just not use VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. They would just use index match, which is a little bit more complicated, but it solves those problems of VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. But now that XLOOKUP is created, it's it just makes it a lot simpler than having to use multiple formulas in conjunction with each other. You can just use the straight up XLOOKUP pass the search key, lookup range, result range. And then if you want to customize it with these optional parameters, you can do that as well. So that's XLOOKUP. Hopefully this helps clear up anything or any questions you have about XLOOKUP. This is one of the coolest formulas you can learn. It's on job postings and you'll use it all the time uh, as a data analyst. So let me know if you have any questions about this and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.